Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933 here and in today's Cisco certification video practice exam we're going to take on access control list, we're going to do a little bit of binary conversion and also I have a feeling we might just see a switching question here. Also a quick reminder, my 40 minute ad free Ether channel webinar is now in on demand format. It's the same webinar I taught in 2009 literally to thousands of students around the world via the webinar service and now the videos are there for you to watch whenever you're ready and you can check that out on the Bulldog blog at the bryantadvantage.blogspot.com and also I've put it on the YouTube channel there are five different sections since they do have a 10 minute time limit so actually it's about 45 minutes overall no ads just 40 to 45 minutes of hardcore CCNA CCNP Ether channel training let's jump into today's questions first I'd like to know which of these an extended ACL will allow and then I want you to tell me which of those a standard ACL will allow. And we'll look at both on live equipment here in just a few minutes. So let's head on for the next question. You can always pause the video if you need a few more seconds. I want you to name those two numeric ranges for standard ACLs and then for extended ACLs as well. And especially for the CCNA exam, you got to know those like the back of your hand because you want to watch out for those of course multiple choice questions, lab questions, all kinds of things. Those numbers definitely come into play. Now of these four statements, and as always my questions are select all that apply, which of these describe defaults for ports on a Cisco 2950 switch? And then finally we're going to finish with this conversion. Let's convert that binary string that you see there on the screen 11001111 to decimal. And you want to be rapid fire with your binary conversions as well before exam day. So taking on this particular question, I'm going to bring the live equipment up here in just a moment. Which of these does an extended ACL allow? And it actually requires quite a few of these. Let's hop out to a router and we can always tell a great deal from our old friend iOS help. First off, we'll revisit the ranges but I want to look at these right now as well. We have two ranges of standard and extended ACL numbers. And we started with 1 through 99 for standard because, of course, that was all the standard ACLs we were ever going to need, right? And a floppy, a floppy disk was going to be the largest storage unit we were ever going to need. Remember that? Well, if you don't, that's okay because that turned out to be pretty wrong. So we've got two ranges of standard numbers here, 1 through 99 and then 1300 through 1999. And our extended ranges are 100 through 199, and then 1300 through 19, excuse me, 2000 through 2699. And the reason I mentioned that and why it turned out that way with two different ranges is occasionally a student will ask, well, you know, why aren't they sequential? Well, truly, we thought at one point that was all we were ever going to need is 1 through 99 for the standard and 100 through 199 for the extended. That was true for a long time, but it's definitely not true anymore. Let's go ahead and use iOS help to look at our options for a dynamic, excuse me, for an extended ACL. And we can just put a deny here because we want to see what we're going to be asked to put. And we'll put IP there. And notice the first value we're asked for are source addresses. It's referring to a source address, source host, or a single source host. And we'll put a network here. And then notice that we are asked for the source wildcard bits. And we're not going to go all the way out with that, but I want you to notice that now you're being asked for destination addresses or whether that be a network, uh, any host, any destination, or a single host. The key here is that we don't see the CR. So this by itself right now is not an acceptable command. If I hit enter, it's going to say incomplete command. That's because for your extended ACLs, it's a requirement that you specify both a source and destination. It's not just something that you can do, it's something that you actually have to do. So for the extended ACL, as we saw, it allows the use of wildcard masks. We're using those, not network masks. And not only does it allow the use of a source and destination IP address, it actually demands one, it requires one. Now, the other question we had, what about a standard ACL? Let's bring the live equipment back up and we'll, uh, we'll go with one here and it's deny and notice we're talking about sources here already 
and wildcard bits. And what about the destination? There is no option for a destination source, uh, excuse me, destination IP address because source IP address is the only thing we can put in a standard ACL. And you'll notice here with the CR, that means this command is legal as it stands. So if I hit enter there, I'm not going to get any kind of uh, incomplete message. So if this question asked about standard ACLs, it allows the use of wildcard masks. It requires a source IP address, but it doesn't let you put in a destination IP address. So that's one important difference there between standard and extended ACLs. We'll bring the list back up here for the ranges. Let me just access list. And we'll use iOS help there. And again, there are your standard ranges. And then there are your extended ranges, 100 through 199 and then 2000 through 2699. Note that there is a MAC address list here, you know, two ranges actually, 700 through 799, and then the extended MAC address list, 1100 through 1199. Couldn't hurt you to know those. You're not going to be using them on the CCNA, and very unlikely you'll be using them on the CCNP, uh, but it's a good idea to know those ranges. So for that next question, of these, which statements describe defaults for a 2950 switch? Well, let's bring one up and take a look at it. I'm going to run the show interface trunk command, and among a lot of other important information here, you'll notice the mode is desirable, that is dynamic desirable, and that is the default mode for these ports on a 2950 switch. Because I write erased two switches, brought them both up, put a host name on them, that was it but the trunks formed automatically because they were both in dynamic desirable mode. So that one is true. While port security is an important part of your CCNA studies and your switching security uh, deployment, uh, it is not default. Uh, it's not a default setting, I should say. You've got to configure port security. Ports are open is a default on a Cisco, Cisco 2950 switch, and that's something to keep in mind as far as your network security goes. So here the correct choices were A, and C. And then finally, a little bit of good old conversion here, binary to decimal, we're taking that string, and you should definitely be familiar with this little row of numbers, and I'll see if the software will let me do it. 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. If that's a little tricky for you, remembering this particular uh, chart, and it's not really a chart, it's just a row, but if you start from right to left and just double the number one seven times that gives you the numbers you need to perform this conversion. I always tell people if you can add, if you can subtract, and you can double the number one seven times you can resolve any Cisco subnetting or binary question. So all you do in this particular instance is put those numbers right where they are in that string And then you just simply add the numbers up that have a 1 underneath them. So it's 128 plus 64 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, which I believe will give us 207 for the answer to that. So that's the answer to the conversion. I want to thank you for taking the time to take this video practice exam. We've got literally dozens of them now uh, on YouTube along with our other tutorials and on the Bulldog blog as well where we've also got that ad-free Ether Channel webinar waiting for you. So get out there and enjoy that. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE, number 12933.